I, I genuinely don't see anywhere to do, to do that on my screen, so I appreciate that. I always have the problem where I forget to sign in in the mornings, and then the record button doesn't let me do anything. Mm. She's down there next to the chat button, and it just like, mm, nope, can't record. Okay. I see. Okay, everyone can see my screen. Is that the case? Yep, all good. All right. Okay. So, uh, thanks everyone. This is the uh, GoLang Core Dev Team Weekly Sync for uh, June third, two thousand nineteen. Um, I'm not going to go over the agenda because we do these uh, regularly, uh, but we're going to do no, nothing different today. Um, bring up chats here. So you can see them. Okay. Um, so if anyone chats, just kind of shout it out. I can't see them at the moment. But uh, we have no uh, announcements unless someone wants to add those in right now. Um, we have no blocks or needs at the moment. I'm sure those are going to come up as we go through the individual uh, into, the, into the individual items. Um, I don't, this isn't quite an announcement or a blocker, but it's like an alternate topic. Um, I know when we first started having these meetings, we decided that we would record them and then we would stick them in a drive folder. Um, and I think we're the only working group that does that. All other working groups um, eventually end up publishing to YouTube. Um, was curious if we'd thought more about that or um, if anyone was averse to starting to put recordings of our weekly meetings up on YouTube to make them more accessible to the community to understand the stuff we're working on um, and kind of index into our projects. I'm personally fine with that. I can't speak for everyone else. Um, I am also fine with that, um, uh, though that would involve, uh, I would assume, I'm not sure who ends up with the, the task of doing that, but I just want to make sure that they would have the, the final say. <laughs> Do the descriptions for the videos tend to have the, the, get, the, the notes links in them? Because I feel like otherwise it's just, there's just too much in, information for it to be valuable to anyone. Uh, historically, we're very lazy about filling out descriptions, but given that we would start doing it, we could define the model by which we did it. I I wouldn't mind taking that too. I used to do that for the the weekly all hands. Any concerns? Concerns are valid. Like, you know, this means that. For example, if we're eating our breakfast in the morning, uh, we might end up eating our breakfast in the morning on, on a YouTube video that is now public into our community um, and indexable over time, um, which I have done and exists on our YouTube channel. So that's... Makes us more I guess there's also, this is also the occasional, like, we have to deal with Filecoin stuff that I don't know if that's in this, belongs in this video or a different one. I think I think Filecoin is uh, you know a publicly accessible project on on GitHub and um, most of the work we do to support them at this point should be you know public and accessible to our community goes into a public repo anyway um, the conversations end up being public. Mostly private conversations should go into a separate call if we have any, which we rarely do. And I th I've at least uh, seen a couple of times where we've called that out in those conversations. Cool. Even my share, like my two bits on that, like the the, the golden rule or or the 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 guiding point is like as a VFS project and a VFS community, we are serving like all the ecosystems and all the users at the same time, and we want to make sure that we can be contributing and also enable others to do so. Uh, when we put our protocol apps hats, we Sometimes you have to take some priorities, even like internal company that is sponsoring all the time. And both of those modes are super okay. But like what you don't want to create is a conversation where the community cannot participate, where the community voice is not heard because it's not attached to 
your my protocol have well, labs had priorities. So if you feel like you are eating one of those conversations or one of those topics, just like take the conversation to the side because ultimately what you want is the community to be like talking about IPFS and, and like the open use cases and like whatever like they can they can like be part of. All right. So I don't I don't hear anyone offering concerns. Um, I'll make an issue and maybe we can start doing that going forward. Molly. Cool. Sorry. Let's no, continue. That's, good. That's, that's what that time's for. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's go through the uh, current IPFS initiatives. First off is data store, which I think uh, Magic is working on. Yeah, so there, there are no updates from me. There's one item from Stabian about priority QA garbage collecting butter, which is how it should be done when using butter. So that needs to be looked at. Cool. Next up is uh, Bitswap. Hannah. Hey, oh good, I'm off mute. Oh, I'm sorry if you guys heard the ice machine then. I thought I was on mute. Um, uh, anyway, um, uh, yeah, yesterday, uh, last week, uh, did some optimizations related to finding providers. Um, I did merge that um, fully uh, before I went home on Friday. Um, and then, uh, so that, that should be a good thing for the next release. Um, uh, I spent a lot of the week trying to get this realistic test net with the DHT up and had some, re some real weird bugs um, that I eventually believe possibly, um, th th so I'm just testing, this is all just in tests. So like I'm using, I'm trying to figure out what's going on and I tracked it down to the, uh, blocks generator or, or sorry not the block generator that when the, the the cids are encoded and decoded in the messages um that something is going wrong with them i'm wondering because i'm using the blocks generator if it's possible that the blocks generator is not set up properly for like the latest cid v1 plus base 32 I, I have no idea i don't know why it would matter but just I don't know. I'm going to keep tracking that down. I feel like I finally know where it is. And once I know for sure, I'll let folks know. Um, and anyway, so yeah, I lost a lot of time to that, unfortunately, difficult bug, but at least I think I know where it is. So uh, that's what I did. And yeah. Oh, this week I'm going to be moving on to, um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, improving sessions. So also I'm out most of this week uh, for vacation. Heads up. Nice. Uh, next up is Core API. Uh, back to you, Magic. Yeah, so this week was mostly fixing small bugs and like tracking them down. Uh, there are still many. Uh, yeah, and the other thing was uh, I pushed some updates to IPFS embedded shell to get it ready for the new constructor and to update the apgot. And also for the fucking tool to download uh, their parameters or yeah, something like that for proofs. Cool. Uh, next up is provider records, which I'm working on. Um, the first provider strategy, which is to provide nothing, um, which is a new feature to be able to do that without disable con disabling content routing um, is merged. I'm working on the next strategy, which is just roots. Um, this is all under an experimental flag, and I'm just sort of trickling in these strategies um, to figure out how the, all of this should be implemented. Um, and I'm just continuing work on that. Um, Next up is the base 32 CD CID v1, which I think Steven, you're the last one to, to touch this stuff. Uh, yes, uh, nothing has changed. Great. All right, IPFS over Fuse, Dominic. Yeah, sure. So recently I've been reading a ton of 
documentation on like other file systems and basically just trying to find all the, the differences and discrepancies between them. And I'm trying to take some of the stuff that I've learned in doing that and, and pull that into our interfaces. So of note was Plan 9's uh, file system protocol, which just has some very interesting stuff in regards to like whether something is or is not local um, and how you handle caching and things like that around that. So um, just have been reading a lot of that and trying to incorporate that into this file system interface stuff. And that's basically it for me. Uh, cool. Next up is, sorry for the background noise. Next up is gateway performance. Um, I'm not sure who who's representing this at the moment or if we have any update and anyone speak for this. I'll take silence and then sit down. So well, I can give a short update. Uh, it has come to head again. Um, so we're looking into it again because you know, it looks entirely related to finding provider records and publishing provider records. So uh, yeah, Jeremy and a bunch of people actually, we're looking at uh, DHD issues and we're trying to solve that. But that's the only update there. Steven, can you, if you, if you get a quick moment, can you connect those people with me? Um, because okay. we, I at least have a thing that they can do to turn off the uh, it's, broadcasting of providing at the very minimum. That luckily is no longer the issue, uh, as far as I can tell. The, the main issue is more that like uh, it's at, like sending a provider record currently just takes forever uh, because like okay, well the, the short version is uh, we try to find the closest peers or the, the, the closest peers to the key, and then we tell them about the provider record. The problem is trying to find the closest peers takes forever. Um, uh, it, it just doesn't return. So that when we time out, we time out there. We, we never actually send any provider records. Uh, instead of uh, like finding the closest peers and then immediately telling them about the date, the, um, uh, the the record. Uh, yeah. Okay. Understood. Thanks. Uh, next up is GraphSync, Hannah. No major update other than. Um, we are having a, a big meeting today, or a meeting today, to hopefully figure out our next steps. So that's it. Oh. Awesome. Looks like someone's busy away with process improvements at the moment. I'm Anyone just adding some notes about um, release process improvements. I think there's some opportunity for us to, to improve our engineering practice around how we do our releases. And so Stephen and I had a chat about that. Um, I'm curious kind of what we foresee as the, the next steps for taking that on. I'm happy to kind of set up a group to do a mini postmortem, which is a practice I'm a huge fan of um, for kind of talking about what we can be doing better. Uh, I think there's some stuff related to CI, to interrupt tests, to Semver. Um, uh, but curious if, if other folks have, have ideas or what the, the right format is to take this forward into implementation. Yeah, I wonder if um, if you do a postmortem, postmortem, sorry, and if that ended up in an issue, um, if that would be a good way to go about it. Works for me. Um, I can write up a a quick framework and then send it out uh, um, to the group for people to kind of populate some stuff into. I know that people, not just in this call, but like. Um, on other teams also probably have feedback on how we could do this better or adopt some best practices from other groups. Um, so I can write up a, a quick framework, but then ask for everyone to add their good ideas about what we can do to improve and um, what's been difficult and annoying in the past that we want to take the time to fix. Cool. Let's try to make a note to even follow up next week, maybe. That sounds really good. Nice. Um, so this next one I added, let me know if this was wrong, but it feels like this is going to be a thing that um, we'll talk about um, uh, moving forward. So we're trying to improve the garbage, garbage collection system to be less intrusive and more performant. There's probably a variety of things that we're trying to do, um, uh, but I think that covers the gist of it. Uh, I started, um, there was a kickoff with uh, Kuba and, and Steven. Um, the, Coming from that was basically just to start gathering all the existing relevant issues into into master issues. Um, 
I am still have the providing work going. So my plan is to just kind of keep this work active, the GC work active by tackling low hanging fruit, just like gathering information and getting uh, kind of the right people in conversations if that needs to happen. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to call out so that people could uh, squash this if it needs to be squashed early, which is that um, I plan on doing the new GC stuff um, experimental from the beginning so that we can kind of do the same thing we're doing with providing, which is kind of get early feedback and, and get an idea of what the, of what our um, thinking is actually, how it's panning out in real life. Um, and that's it. Uh, that's it for garbage collection. I'll note that my plan was not squashed. Uh, so uh, moving on is uh, IPNS. Uh, Dean, I think you're doing all the work on that? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Um, so I, I finished the stuff from last week in terms of you know, rewriting the uh, PubSub over IPNS stuff to live mostly at the uh, golibp2p PubSub router package, which is basically like a value store wrapper around PubSub. Um, so I'm just trying to get some, some PRs with that kind of push through. There's a discovery one, then there's this other one that's going to have to go out with moving all the data, moving all these changes, you know, into master. Uh, I did some work on uh, a stateful rendezvous client um, that implements the discovery interface so that we can then go and use that with PubSub and then we'll have a rendezvous server operable IPNS if we want to. Um, there's some PRs for that. And then uh, I've got to make uh, Go IPFS actually be able to process one of these uh, rendezvous servers and say, hey, I want to connect to you. Um, so I will be working on that in addition to some demos uh, over the coming week. Uh, awesome. I think that's all the initiatives that we have. Um, cross team updates, test bed. Thanks. I think you're working on that. Yep. Uh, yeah, just a pretty small update. I've, I've kind of finished my little test lab vacation, uh, working on some core of the P2P issues. Uh, and this week I am going to break ground on a test lab plugin for IPFS cluster. Um, so, Adrian uh, had a use case where he just wanted to be able to have the test lab uh, configure a cluster and automatically con connect everything together. Um, that's exactly the type of thing that it's capable of doing. It doesn't have to run benchmarks if you don't want it to. So uh, I figured this would be like a really great little proof of concept for that team. Uh, so that's probably going to be uh, my focus. I also have some DHT stuff that I'll be working on. Um, but that's the, the big test lab thing for me. Great. Anyone else have any other cross team updates that aren't that aren't posted here? I'll take silence as a no. Um, we seems we have no wins or celebrations. Did we get the? Did that release candidate uh, make its way out? Get put together? Uh, the release actually made its way out, so it's all done. Uh, I, I didn't add that to the notes. Nice. Cool. Well, yeah. So it's it's working. Nice. <laughs> Always good news. <laughs> um, any questions or anything like that before we wrap up? Great. Uh, awesome. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining. I'll have a good week, and we'll see you next week. One, uh, one update, actually. Uh, I am probably or I am going to be out maybe the second half of Thursday and definitely all of Friday at my brother's wedding. So uh, I will probably still be reachable, but it'll be intermittent. Understood. Thanks for the update. Happy wedding. See you. Take care. <laughs>